This video is about understanding mean arterial pressure and total peripheral resistance. Uh, the reason I'm making this video is from from some of your comments, I came to the understanding that there is a lot of confusion. Uh, when total peripheral resistance goes up, how it increases mean arterial pressure and vice versa. So uh, let's get a detailed understanding of these two concepts. Um, now, I found that the best way to interpret uh, mean arterial pressure and total peripheral resistance is through two things. We have to understand a diagram and we have to understand equations that we have to know for USMLE. Now let's first talk about what equations we have to know. So this is just memory. Mean arterial pressure, we know that mean arterial pressure is equal to cardiac output times total peripheral resistance. Let's put the equations down first, okay? We're going to interpret them later. And we know that cardiac output is equal to heart rate times stroke volume, okay? So now I can write that mean arterial pressure is equal to cardiac output, which is equal to heart rate times stroke volume. So heart rate times stroke volume multiplied by total peripheral resistance, okay? This is one equation that we know about mean arterial pressure. Another equation that we have floating around is mean arterial pressure is equal to two-thirds diastolic pressure plus one-third systolic pressure, okay? This makes a lot more sense than all these mumbo-jumbo because we are calculating what's mean. Mean is average. Average arterial pressure, right? What is the average arterial pressure? The average arterial pressure is going to be determined by mostly by the diastolic pressure because the diastolic pressure is the pressure in the aorta plus some of the systolic pressure as well. So we're not going to really talk about this. We're going to use these equations in terms of understanding mean arterial pressure. So now that we have the equations down, let's talk about the diagram. Now here I have drawn an artery okay imagine that this is the aorta okay now blood is coming through this way inside the aorta and it's exiting this way okay so imagine that this is the flow flow in flow out okay so when you have more blood coming in so let's say your cardiac output is going up then more blood is going to come to the aorta okay if let's say 100 milliliter per you know unit blood comes inside the aorta and 100 milliliter per unit of blood exits the aorta then you know there is no change in the mean arterial pressure but let's say we decrease the volume of aorta on its way out but the in is the same so what's going to happen to the blood here it's going to put pressure on the blood vessel right it's going to put pressure on the blood vessel and it's going to stretch the blood vessel so this pressure and this stretch that is created onto the blood vessel is called the mean arterial pressure okay so when you have increased cardiac output more blood is coming to the aorta if more blood is coming and the flow out has not changed then there is going to be more pressure on the blood vessel here if there is more pressure in the blood vessel, even though the flow out is constant, this is going to increase our mean arterial pressure. Okay, so that's one way. Another way is let's say the cardiac output remains the same. It does not really change significantly, okay? The cardiac output remains the same. But we decrease the the we decrease the diameter of the blood vessels out, okay? We decrease it. So there is more blood that is trapped in here because it cannot exit this blood vessel. So this decreasing the blood vessel is really, we are increasing total peripheral resistance, okay? Because we are increasing total peripheral resistance, the mean arterial pressure is going to go up because there is less flow out 
outside the uh, art artery, right? Now, some of you in some of the comments that I have seen uh, were mentioning that if we if we um, decrease TPR, okay, if we decrease TPR, then what's going to happen to our mean arterial pressure? Well, if we decrease TPR, just think about this diagram. If we decrease T TPR, then there is going to be the opening is going to be large, right? So more flow is going to happen through this exit point. If there is more flow, then there is going to be less pressure or there is going to be less stretch on this blood vessel. If there is less stretch on this blood vessel, what's going to happen to our mean arterial pressure? The mean arterial pressure is going to drop. So if TPR drops, mean arterial pressure drops. If TPR goes up, mean arterial pressure goes up. If TPR is constant and TPR does not change, even then mean arterial pressure can go up because of increased cardiac output, increased stroke volume, increased heart rate, right? Because this is going to increase the flow in, right? If the flow in increases, then all these variables can increase the flow in, which can increase the mean arterial pressure because the flow out remains the same. Or you decrease the decrease the di diameter of the flow out vessel and you have increased mean arterial pressure. So now that we understand conceptually what it means, let's bring our equation. So we know that mean arterial pressure is equal to cardiac output times total peripheral resistance. So now if I say that if we increase mean arterial pressure, what's going to happen Sorry, if we increase our total peripheral resistance, what's going to happen to mean arterial pressure? It's going to go up, right? Okay, what about what happens if we say if we increase cardiac output? If we increase cardiac output, what's going to happen to our mean arterial pressure? Mean arterial pressure is going to go up as well. Now, if I say that if we increase cardiac output, mean arterial pressure goes up, but what happens to the total peripheral resistance? Does it go up? Not necessarily, right? Because the total peripheral resistance has to go up, you know, it might just remain the same, but because of increased cardiac output, we have increased mean arterial pressure. Now let's extend this equation onto the other one, which is mean arterial pressure is equal to heart rate times stroke volume times total peripheral resistance. So now, if we say that if we increase heart rate, is that going to increase uh, mean arterial pressure? Probably, right? Because more blood is going to come in here, depending, you know, what the heart rate is. If the heart rate is really, really high, and there is no blood exiting the heart, and very little, there is very little cardiac output, then that might not happen. But let's imagine that the heart rate is generating more stroke volume. So when the heart rate at the initial phases of exercise, let's say it's going to increase mean arterial pressure because more blood is coming in. Uh, what about stroke volume? What if we increase stroke volume? Again, the mean arterial pressure is, go is going up. Now, just because the mean arterial pressure is going up, does it mean TPR is going up? No. This is the confusion that a lot of you are having, that if we increase mean arterial pressure, if their stretch increases, does it mean resistance increase? No. In fact, if the resistance is really really high the chances are that by you know by the by the mechanism by the sympathetic mechanism of the body the total peripheral resistance might even go down okay it might even go down right depending on how much the stretch is so it will definitely not go up in fact it's going to go down so now that we understand the basic premise of this um, of this uh, physiology uh, mechanism. Let's do a quick question and let's see if we can use this um, use this method to answer our question. Now the question says that a 24 year old man has a mean arterial pressure of 95. So 25 year 24 year old with mean arterial pressure of 95 millimeter mercury. Okay, at rest. So this is at rest. Okay. After swimming for 35 minutes, his mean arterial pressure has risen only significantly to 115. 
So this is mean arterial pressure 2, this is mean arterial pressure 1, and this is going to be 115 millimeter mercury, and this is during, this is right after exercise, so from 95 to 15, so we have about 20 millimeter mercury of increase. A decrease in which of the component uh, during exercise accounts for the finding. So what decrease in what cause this mean arterial pressure to go up? Okay, so let's draw a little diagram. I love this method. I mean, there, you cannot go wrong if you use this method of drawing it out. Okay, even though you know you can draw it, draw it out in your head during the exam, but it's a foolproof method. So initially it was 95. Okay, but now it's 115 right after exercise. So there is more stretch on our aorta or, or on on our artery. Right? If there is more stretch, what is going to decrease what is going to decrease because see it says that it's only six, slightly to 115 so arterial pressure has risen only slightly to 115 millimeter mercury so even though there is vigorous exercise the mean arterial pressure has not gone up significantly why how what had to compensate this uh, mean arterial pressure well what happened is our flow out has opened its door, okay? It has decreased the total peripheral resistance. As a result, there is more flow out, which is keeping the mean arterial pressure throughout the body quite constant. So our TPR is decreased, even though our mean arterial pressure is increased, right? So, what's the question? The question says a decrease in which of the which component during exercise accounts for this family. So it's going to be a decrease in total peripheral resistance, which is going, which is accounting for the finding. And what's the finding? The finding is that th there is increase of mean arterial pressure, but only slightly. Now, whenever we're talking about total peripheral resistance, you know what? The best thing to do is write down the equations and see what are the variables. So we know the, what are the variables that can affect our mean arterial pressure. It can be total peripheral resistance, cardiac output, heart rate, stroke volume, diastolic pressure, uh, systolic pressure. Why am I putting diastolic pressure and systolic pressure? Because that is also, uh, you know, you, that is also affected in this equation, right? So these are the, some of the components of total total peripheral resistance and what can really affect it. So I just wanted to throw it out there. So this is my interpretation of mean arterial pressure and total peripheral resistance and I hope I made this easier for you to understand and to interpret.